Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, possibly one of the most staggeringly difficult puzzles that we've ever attempted on the channel. Um, this is Dimorphism by the absolutely brilliant Jay Dyer. Now Jay has created a puzzle here. You can see there are two grids and they both have the same sort of shape in. The left hand one is red, the right hand one is blue. Uh, why don't I just read you these rules because this is headbagging stuff. I'll read you the rules and then, then we can talk about how on earth we're going to try and solve it. So in each grid, place the digits one to six in cells such that each row, column and region contains all digits once each. OK, so we're only. Oh, hang on. That's a that's an interesting question straight away. So we're only dealing with 72 cells I have to solve today, not the usual 81. So in theory, this should be easier, except each grid contains six sum cells, S-U-M that is, one per row, column and region. The value of a sum cell equals the cell's digit plus the digit in the same position in the other grid. No digit can appear in more than one sum cell in the same grid and sum cells may be in the same position in the two grids. So, so far, I take it we've got to populate. Hang on, let me just read that again. Yeah, OK, so we've got to populate each grid with six special cells, one per row, column and box. And I think what it's saying is that those sum cells have to be different numbers because it says no digit can appear in more than one sum cell in the same grid. So this is going to have some sum cells and this is going to have some sum cells. But the value of the sum cells for the purposes of the rules I'm about to read is the, is the digit. So let's imagine that was a sum cell. It's going to be the digit in this cell plus. Hang on. Oh, hang on. These two, <laughs> I haven't noticed this. The boxes are shaped differently. So that's a sort of that's a rectangle that looks like a flag. And this is more like a tower, isn't it? OK, but the equivalent of that that cell is that one I think I think it's that one I might be wrong that's doing something with my eyes but anyway so if this was I don't know if this was a five and this was a two then the value of this would be seven <laughs> I think is how this works hang on let's let's reset the grid um now my time is going up as well so something whatever's gone wrong with the timer in recent days is, is going correct again now Along a red line, the cell's values form a non-repeating set of consecutive numbers in any order. So if we worked out that there was a 1 on this line here, we would know that this line had to contain 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in some order. That's how red lines work. Along a blue line, the sum of the cell values is the same in each region the line passes through. So this is region sum lines, which we actually had yesterday. So what that tells us is that those two digits there have to add up to the same as those two digits. So I don't know if these added up to 10, those would have to add up to 10. Um, white dots connect cells with consecutive values. So if this was a one, oh, I'll try to put, make, put that one. If this is a one, this would have to be a two to make sure the digits are consecutive. And not all dots are necessarily given, so some other dominoes in the grid might contain consecutive digits. And that is it. This puzzle, Dimorphism, has 100% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany. I did just snip some comments before I turned on the webcam so that we could admire the feedback. Things like an absolute joy. Several moments of, but that must mean, but can it? It must. <laughs> Mind-blowing idea. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is this is obviously going to be quite a challenge, but extremely interesting. So um, bear with me. We'll get we'll kick off and we will we'll get cracking in a moment or two. I have some things to tell you about first. I'm going to start with some news about Sven, who's the programmer we work with and who creates this software that we all use every day when we're solving the puzzles. So Sven is doing a special Sudoku pad stream on Sunday evening at 4 p.m. UK time. Um, so Sven, I think he quite often streams himself adding in features to this software, 
but I think on Sunday he's going to be going through you know all the stuff he's working on and sort of summarizing it all so that sounds really cool so check that out I'll try and remember to put a link under this video uh, next I've got to tell you about a crossword video I d we did the times masterclass today where we attempt to solve the times crossword and a very very interesting puzzle so if you're in interested in cryptic crosswords do check that video out I'll try and remember to put a, a link to that on the screen uh, I've got two birthdays to do today I'm going to start off by saying a very happy birthday to Dr Dustin and that's from Lowry, Ellie and MJ. I think Lowry's your wife and Ellie and MJ are your daughters. Um, and apparently you enjoy watching Cracking the Cryptic with a glass of sake. Well, that is incredibly civilised, Dr. D Dr. Dustin. Um, and I hope you have an absolutely splendid 45th birthday today with sake and cake. Um, and also Miriam. Now, Miriam is over in Jerusalem and Miriam turns an age today that is 11 more than the secret. That is all we shall reveal. Some of you may be able to deduce the, the age, but uh, a lady's age should have always remain a secret, of course. But Miriam, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day um, with cake. Um, right, next I have another a very special announcement actually to make, um, but it is tinged with with well tragedy i suppose is 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 a suitable word i want to i want to say a few words to one of our younger viewers um leon who's over there in east london um now uh, and this, this i mean this is just awful but leon leon's little brother otto um and and i think leon and otto were best friends um well otto was was taken from the world far too young back in October last year absolutely awful and I cannot fathom um, how hard the last few months must have been for you Leon and your family of course um, but I, I'm here to tell you just how proud I suppose well your parents are with how you're doing and they they let me in on a little secret um, I know that you you love Egypt and you want to be an Egyptologist, I understand, um, which is a very fine and noble ambition. And your parents, Nicholas and Elizabeth, are they're going to take you somewhere in July that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, so you are you are off to see the Valley of the Kings and the pyramids and everything around there um, this summer. And I do hope you have the most spectacular time um, I hope all of you have the most spectacular time as I say you have you've, you've you've had the worst thing you can imagine to deal with and you deserve it um, and have that brilliant time and if you remember please do send Mark and I a couple of photos we'd love to see you with smiles on your faces so Leon look forward to that my friend and yeah Let's. I can't connect to your Wi-Fi network. You can find setup and There is there is, the there is something wrong with that software. There is something wrong with that software. But anyway, Alec, she has interrupted, um, and that allows me to move on. Let me tell you about Patreon. Well, our monthly reward. Um, has has closed now that the, the the competition deadline was yesterday so we've had an absolutely amazing response thousands of you attempted the puzzles uh, nearly a thousand of you managed to solve the first five puzzles which is really really good because those puzzles were not easy this is the nightmare um the nightmare hunt nightmare on sudoku street from the skunk works um over on over on patreon and the um what, what else can i tell you about that well we've had we've had hundreds of people who have solved all of the puzzles all 19 it is absolutely staggering um so every month we get this wrong we we, we sort of test the puzzles and we think yeah they're really hard no you know we'll, we might get 50 correct entries we'll read out the names of those brilliant people and then and then you just amaze us by hundreds and hundreds of people solve them all um, and don't worry if you've not heard your name yet um because uh, it takes time to read out so many names and I only read out a few each episode so we're way behind so if you haven't heard your name but you expect to 
you will hear it in due course. But very well done to Fabian Schultzer, Chrissy White, Matt Pearson, Claude Petrie, Josiah Fong, Input J, Shea Ganarelli, Luke Bovard, Michael Branford, Michael Harvey, and Mike Daniels, a triumvirate of Mikes there, uh, Abinoff, Abinaf Jane, Morgan Piper, Christy Klingert, Rachel Edwards, uh, Lauren Herto, Brian Bergolt, and Chris Deeks. Well solved, one and all. And I think that's all I've got to tell you about. So I've got, I will have news about next month's monthly reward, which we think is going to be something absolutely spectacular. Um, but I, I better not say any more about that. Why don't we kick off and have a look at Jay's puzzle and see what she has in store for, store for us today. Um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And let's see. Right, I've almost forgotten the rules now. So yes, there are some special cells, aren't there? And the left-hand grid has a red line, which is a, basically a Renban line. So we've got none, oh, hang on. Okay, so the, I can see something very odd about the left-hand grid. And the, oh yes, and the right-hand grid is the region sum lines grid. Um, Uh, okay, I can't see anything. I can't see anything immediate in the right-hand grid. So let's look at this left-hand grid where something very peculiar is going on because this line is much too long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. Okay. So this line is twelve long, and and yet we can only and and every oh every value every value that's how it's framed every value has to be different so but we've only got six different numbers to put in the grid so what we actually know in the right in the left hand grid i should say is that these cells have to contain the special cells because they're going to have to be adjusted aren't they um and the way they get adjusted is that we add in values from the second grid. Right, so what we're going to have to do is to populate, let's just yellowify. So these yellow digits are going to have to be the numbers one to 12, because there's nothing else we can make. We, we can put normal digits in the left-hand grid and they'll be one to six. So everything else is going to have to be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, because it's going to have to, um, it's going to have to take a digit from this side and add it to itself. And we can't get beyond 12 because we could add a six to a six, but that's the most we could do. Now, right. And this is straight away important, isn't it? Because am I not told that the, these, I have to put one of these special cells in every every box. So how could that not be the special cell in this box? It must be that. That must be the special cell, I think. That's how I understand the rules. So that can't, right, so neither of those can be special cells because then there would be more than one special cell in a column, row, or box. So that must be a special cell. Uh, oh dear. And then, and then the path runs cold. So we get two special cells basically given to us. And these are going to add up to the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers. I can't, I can't see how to get any more of these. This is most discombobulating. I'm sure that I'm meant to be able to get more of these. And this has no effect, does it, on these? So I know that that cell and that cell are being added to these cells. But the, but I, I don't know that these these don't have to be some cells, do they? Because we have, we're thinking about a totally different problem in the right-hand grid because we're, we're worried about these blue lines and the region sum lines. So, uh, 
Let me think about this. So one of the left hand, one of these is, dub well, not one of these, but one of these yellows is a double six, isn't it? One of them has to be 12. I'm wondering whether... How, all right, let's try this. Is this right? If... One of the one of the red cells on the left, i.e. one of the sum cells, is double six. Don't know which one it is, but it will be double six. But having achieved a double six to put a twelve on the line, how do I put an eleven on the line, which I'm going to have to do? Because what I'm thinking is, if that's a six and it matches off with a six on this side, that gives me my twelve. But I need an eleven. But I can't put another six in here because these red cells have to be different from one another. So this, so the way, the way you have to achieve a yeah, the way you have to achieve eleven is by a five at a six. And the way you then have to achieve a ten is going to be to put a four with a six because you can't use five or six in the sum cells on the left hand side and it iterates in other words the digit seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in the left hand grid on the red red line are made up with a co congregation of sixes from the right hand grid so it's all the sixes so all the sixes in the right hand grid are on the long line <laughs> But that, so all of those cells have to be the sixes somehow. Right, but I've got to put, they've got to be all of the sixes because we're dealing with six different numbers. So there must be a six in this box that must be on the line. So that's a six. There we go. I've actually got, right, let's delete these. But I've had, that is a real digit. Um, now, that's a real six because I need to put a six in this box and it can't go here. So that's a real digit. This is not a six because it would be a second six. There's a six in there. Right, okay, where's the six in column one? That's only that can only be there. So that's not a this is amazing. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. So so far, hang on, that's yet yellowed. So far I've got four sixes. Now, now we go over to this grid because these sixes must correspond to special cells on the left hand grid. So that one has become a red digit now, which means these two are not red digits, which means that uh, that is a red digit, which you can see is correct because that's a six. What about that one? So that's that one. So that's got to be a red digit. This is this is quite confusing, actually. I'm very, very. Uh, oh, this is bizarre. So now. Oh, I see. I could have got that one earlier because I knew that that one was a sum digit, and then I knew it was associated with a six. So I could have just written a six in here. This is completely and utterly bonkers. <laughs> so now I've got all the sixes. I've got all the sixes in the right-hand grid, and I know where all of the special cells are in the left-hand grid, and these have to be the numbers one, one to six, which is going to equate them on the line to the digits 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So the other digits on the line in these positions are different. Actually, that I am going to record that. I mean, I can see those are different, but I wouldn't have known that digit was different from that digit, absent that information. I suppose I'm, I could have sort of realized it from there on the same Renban. But the red digits are going to become double digit numbers. Well, they're going to count for double digit numbers. The yellow digits are just, are just, they all have to just be different.
Right, so what does this mean? I hear you gasp. Um, I have not got a clue. How on, how on earth are we going to use the... So the other, right, so the other red bands, the other red lines in the left-hand grid don't contain any nonsenses, do they? They are pure, natural ren bands. So this, which is a five cell ren band, is either one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six. So it always has two, three, four, and five on it. But I, I, what I'm hunting for there, I was wondering about that cell, but unfortunately I can't do anything with that. Because imagine there was a digit that couldn't be on this, you know, so, so from its position Sudoku-wise it couldn't be a digit on the Ren band. Then you would know that digit would have to be a 1 or a 6. But that digit we can't make that assumption from, because it could be there on the Ren band. Right, this one... This cell, I can immediately see, is restricted. But the, but the fact is, this Ren band is shorter. So this one could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 3, 4, 5, 6. So it only has to have 3 and 4 on it. Which means this digit... I want to say that cannot possibly be a 3 or a 4. If it was a 3 or a 4, yeah, it, it doesn't matter what its value is. It just, Sudoku-wise, it would just break the puzzle. So that digit is 1, 2, 5, or 6. I think. Um... Okay, now what's that telling me? <laughs> That's telling me that that digit can't repeat any of those digits, but it's so restricted anyway. So really I'm learning that there's a three or a four in two of those five cells. I don't know. J Jay is one of these people. I just think, how do you have these ideas? This is not a natural idea. <laughs> this is so bonkers. Um... Uh, this one, I don't know what I meant to do with this one. Let's come and have a look at this one on the right then. So we've learned about sixes, but the blue lines are totally different beasts. So the blue line... Ah, okay. That's a special cell. I can tell you that for nothing. It, because in the blue line, it's region sum lines, which means that this digit, which is the only instance of the line, the long line in this box, so that cell, let's use yellow again, that's got to add up to the same as those two digits, these three digits. So it needs to be increased. So that must be a special cell. Um, now, do we use red again for the special cells in, in the right-hand grid? Maybe we do. So that's a special cell. Um, oh, I tell you what's hard as well is I'm looking at this line. I'm thinking it's not got a six on it now from a Ren band perspective, but that's total and utter nonsense because in this grid it's a region sum line. So that's it, right. So that's a special cell. Let's try and eliminate all the cells that therefore so those are definitely not special cells ah okay and here's another point if if that six is a special cell i can't put six into i can't have another red six can i because i'm only allowed to have one six that's special Okay, so now I want that to be special. If, yeah, 
that must be right. If this, right, if this, whatever this square is, this is not a special square. Row two, column five in the right hand grid, unfortunately, it's not special. Um, so whatever it is, let's say it's a three, that means that the region sum line total would be nine. But that, how do I make this add up to nine? That would have to be a three again. So that must be special and pick up. Oh, I see it. So it's picking up this digit. <laughs> and the yellow, what were the yellow? Di oh, the yellow digits in the left grid were, were the small numbers. They were one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's getting picked up here. Right, but we can greenify more of the grid now. Oh, this is useful. Okay, so that becomes a special digit by the power of Sudoku. Um, okay. This cell, I sort of feel like that's trying to be special. <laughs> if that was special, we would, we'd be able to place all the rest of the special digits. Um... Hang on. One of these is special. One of these three is... Uh, I don't think this works, does it? What about these two squares? Th those two squares are natural. So this is... Ah, oh, so those two digits are the same. Right, that must be right. I don't think it matters, but it must be true. Um, because because we know those two digits add up to the same as those two digits. Uh, and these two are totally natural. They're not perverted by, by, the, um, by the red cells. Those two cells are the same number. I'm going to label that. I'm going to label those A. These are the same. So... This one plus this one sums to A. <laughs> um, A lives down there by Sudoku. These two, see this, could, if that's a red digit, that would really put some pressure because that would be adding, then we'd be adding this cell this cell and this cell to get the sort of region sum total on the right over the long line. I don't know how to do this. Um, sorry, I, I know I'm... Um, I know I've seemed to have stopped, but that's because my brain has stopped telling me things. Uh, how am I meant to think about this then? Is there... Is there something obvious I'm meant to appreciate? Uh, we can't repeat a digit in red, can we? But I wasn't I wasn't wanting to. These two squares are the same. If that's natural, that is also A. Would I don't think that would matter very much. So okay. Hmm. So how on earth do we do this then? Ah. A is not on that line, which we know includes three and four. No, that's not right. That's the other grid. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> that is awful. That's just that's just people playing with my head. This is what happened yesterday with the modular and entropic lines. It's very hard to just make your brain think about different logic for the same looking things. Um, oh, I was about to get quite interested in that. There's no way I can sort of do that logic, is there? There's no, there's no correspondence between the fact that these squares have to include a three and a four. And if that was green, if that was green, these would be at least a one, two pair. So we know that this digit, a the a digit, is at least equal to three, and it can't be okay, and it can't be a six. So the total for each of these region sum slices is either nine, ten, or eleven. Which. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can do this very easily. It's either 9, 10 or 11. So these squares can't include a 5. Because if, if we got as high as that, we'd have 5 plus 1 at least. And the, the region sum total would be 12. And we'd have to put double 6 into one of these, one of these little congregations so these squares are ones twos threes and fours i'm sure this isn't how to do this by the way i think there's something cleverer that we could do here um okay so if this is three If this is three, this has to be a one, two pair, doesn't it? And how does that affect the world? <laughs> so if this is a one, two pair. This line, this line's then got quite a big total. Um, sorry, I know I know many of you will have already figured all this out, but I am struggling to understand what on earth I'm meant to do here. I think I've got to. I, I don't think I can have massive digits in here, can I? Because. Yeah, the maximum value of this is five. And I've still got to put uh, one of these special cells down here. So the minimum sum of those cells is 10. But the maximum, because these could be one, two, three, and four as an absolute minimum. So these add up to at least 10, but these add up to a maximum of five. So these add up to a minimum of five. And that's that digit. But the problem, you can't just write five in there, can we? Because this could be a naughty digit. I.e. if it's a red digit, then then it doesn't have to be you know a physical five it could add up to five by being a two and then this square being a three so so i'm struggling a bit to understand how this can possibly work <laughs> um uh, maybe i come back to this grid again do we know more about this grid than i think we know quite Probably we do. 
we must know that we know that the red digits are all different and they correspond to sixes don't we we do know that yellows are all different but they correspond to one two three four five and six this renban has two choices it's definitely got two three four and five on it I really don't see how to use that. I just don't. This one's got to have three and four on it. That that fixes this cell a little bit. So this cell has to be from the panoply of digits that are not on that one. And how does this all affect what's going on over here? Oh, okay, if that's a six, yeah, ah, oh, here's a small point. That can't be a six, can it? Because then this would add up to 12, and I can't make that add up to 12. Right, that's a tiny point, but might be helpful. So can that really be five? If it's five, the total is 11 for the right-hand line because it's this digit plus this digit. So that would be a five and that would be a five. I feel like that's putting too many fives into the world. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, 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 this is five, this is five. That's it. I hadn't understood this at all. It is, yeah, it's so weird oh you're going to have been shouting at me but but trust me this isn't that i don't think this is completely and utterly simple okay this digits value is so this ren band did affect it because that cell which is added to this cell to create its value because this cell can't be a three or a four the value for this line is therefore either seven eight or eleven but the value for that cell is 9 10 or 11 and that the value the reason this is 3 4 5 is because those cells cannot be low enough yeah so the, so the only thing that works is 5 here this has got to be 5 this has got to be 5 one of these is 5 let's get rid of the a now um, and this has to be 5 and now oh this is beautiful now there's no 5 on this line so this line has got to be 1 2 3 and 4 and all of a sudden we are we're digits a go-go here now well now, <laughs> now now something very peculiar happens with this digit so that digit whatever it is it's, it's got to be a one two three or four by well you can see that by sudoku but that digit plus this digit adds up to five Okay. Now, what does this mean? A six in this grid has to be in one of those two cells. So six is at the top of column five in the left hand grid. And Do we get anything else? <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, there's a fly. Go away, fly. You're distracting me. This line. This line can't have five or six on it. So it's made up of ones, twos, threes, and fours. But yeah, okay. So this line, I know the region sum. The region sum for this line is five. Because imagine it was less than five. Well, or, or more than five. It, it just won't work. Um, so if we try and make this seven, 
If we, if we try and make the region sum 7, this would be a 4, 3, but this would need to be 4, 3. That doesn't work. If we try and make it 6, this would have to be 2, 4. This would have to be 2, 4. This digit would not have a permittable value. If we make it 5, it can work because there are two different ways of making 5. If we make it 4, this is a 1, 3 pair, and this would need to be a 1, 3 pair. So this digit has no value. If we make it 3, this has to be a 1, 2 pair, and this has no value. That's very strange. But these two squares add up to 5, and those two squares add up to 5. Right. And what that means is that this line... Is like, it's like a Renban line, in the sense that every digit on it is different. And that, that means, because if this was 2, 3, say, this would have to add up to 5 without using 2 and 3, so it would have to be 1 and 4. So that means that digit and that digit are the same digit. Because in this column, this digit cannot repeat on the line, so those two are the same digit, which means there's a digit there in one of those two squares. Um, it also means, for what it's worth, that those two digits add up to five. Because if these two add up to 5, if they're a 2, 3 pair, this would have to be a 1, 4 pair. So these add up to 5. So this is like, um, let's call that AB, and let's label that B. This AB pair has to be here. So this digit is, well, this is a low digit, but it, it might be increased by the um, by the craziness because we don't. One of these has got to go crazy and be red, but I don't think we know. I don't think we know which one. Oh no! Hang on, hang on. This is simpler. This is simpler than I made. Oh <laughs> no! Hang on. Yeah, right. If we know, and we do know this, that in the right-hand grid the number we're heading towards is 11, these two squares somehow have to add up. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong line even. But, but hang on, these two have to add up to 5. But, but the problem is this could be red, in which case it's borrowing a digit from over here, which have to be a low digit. But doesn't this have to, hang on, doesn't this have to be red? Because these four have to add up. Whatever, whether there's any rednesses, well, there is some rednesses, but whatever rednesses are going on in this sequence here, just from a pure Sudoku perspective, we can't put less than one, two, three, and four in there. So these squares have to add up to 10 minimum. Those have to add up to exactly 5. So these have to add up to 5 or more, which means the value of this is 5 or more. Well, it can't be 5, an actual 5, so it has to be a special digit. This has to be green. These have to be green. This has to be special, and we get a special in the corner. That's special in the corner. It doesn't have the right ring to it, does it? But I've suddenly done all of the specialness on the on the right hand side and I've done all the specialness on the left hand side. So at this point, after 44 minutes, we can consider ourselves ourselves quarate on specials. We have achieved specialization. Now Well, that's interesting as well because this one now has become very special. So this one, yeah, th this line has all sorts of specialness along it, doesn't it? So this one plus that one. This one's got to be one, two, three, or four. We don't, we literally know almost nothing about the digits on the left-hand side. So we could be adding six here. 
to a four. That's the most we could be. So we could be in a world where this line has contains regions that sum to 10. But that looks very achievable given that we've got two specials in each of these boxes. Um, wow. <laughs> um, we've got to put five into a red cell in this right hand grid. And that one, these two can't be five, and that one can't be five. Hang on a minute, is that right? That is right. I've got to put five into a red cell. Where does it go? It seems to have to go here. It is, that is right, isn't it? We can't, yeah, we can't repeat a digit in a red cell. These two fives, I think, see by Sudoku all the other possible positions of five. I think we get a five in the corner. Oh, that gives me a five there. Sorry, I didn't see that. So now I've got four fives in the grid. There's a five in one of those two cells and a five in one of these cells. Oh, <laughs> I've just realized I could have written this digit in. Once we worked out that was six five. Well, I, don't, I can't remember at what point I got the reds fixed, but this has to add up to 11. So that is a five, um, which means this is a five. And now all of a sudden in, in the right hand grid, I've placed all of the fives and all of the sixes. That must be important, especially here. So this, this, this region now, if that was a one, if that was a one and that was a one, this would still add up to seven. So this digit, oh, this is Bobbins. No, it doesn't work, does it? Because, okay, that's a one, two, three or four by Sudoku, but we can still add a six to it over here and we can still get to seven that, that easily. don't understand I don't understand how this can possibly have enough communication in it to work I know don't need the green anymore do I in, in this grid now we've located all of the reds Uh, <laughs> I mean, how, how am I meant to make progress here? Sorry, and I, I do apologize as well if, if you've all spotted a way of doing this. I most certainly haven't. I see, I don't know whether in the left-hand grid I need to do things like, because five can't repeat in red, you know, five is in that domino. Five has to be on this line, doesn't it? So it can't go I don't think this matters. I think it's five has to be. Oh, five has to be in yellow as well. Oh, nearly, nearly interesting. So for five to be in yellow, it's got to be in one of these positions. Can we do anything with that? If that was five, that would be five, and that would be five, because you couldn't repeat a five in yellow. And then that would be five. And then 
that would be five so that that actually looks very plausible okay this is not the way to do this um all right let's go back over to this grid uh It's very sad to leave this one so sparsely filled, though. I just I don't know how to think about this one on the on the on the left. I think I could believe there's some sort of geometric trick I need to consider, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. So let's think instead about other things. What do we know about the right hand grid? We know all we've got A B here. What was A B? Oh A B was because things added up to five. So all of the remaining digits are from one, two, three, and four, because we have placed everything. We've placed all fives and all sixes. Can we colour in somehow the these digits? We know that one's A, which is the same as that one. Right red you can't repeat in red can you that was something we established so in this box I can place that digit I think yeah I'm going to do that okay that digit let's make it blue has to go there because otherwise it would repeat in red we know it's not six so it's not going here and it's not in the same row as itself so that digit goes there but then that digit, which also can't be in, in repeat in red, that digit and that digit are the same. So those two digits, oh, I don't want to really use yellow, uh, yellow, I use green. These two digits are the same. Now, these are from different versions of five, aren't they? Because if this is a two, three pair, this would be a one or four. So... Oh, I don't I can't relate that to A yet because A I know one of these is A but I don't know if it's this one this might be B <laughs> which is that one um, so this is A or B green okay green is in one of those two cells so green is in one of these two cells. Oh, this is not going to work. There's just not quite enough information. Green. Okay, green. No, I'm wrong. I'm absolutely wrong. Where does green go in that box? Green. I don't think green can go in red because green has gone in red here. So green is in one of these two cells. But that asks the question, where does green go in this box? And by Sudoku... It goes there. That's green. So green goes here. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't resolve. We get left with an X wing of greens. But we have got green on a white dot. So what we actually want to do here, you know is we want to conclude that this yeah imagine if I could get that digit on there because I know they add up to five I would know that was a two three white dot right how do we do that let's get this digit into here so we'll give this one uh, orange okay so how does that work with the world so orange so orange hasn't made any appearances in red yet so I can't I can't say anything about orange in this box, I don't think. Orange is not the same as green, is it? So orange orange is in one of those three cells. Ah, so I could get I could get orange in red. If that's not orange. Yeah, okay, maybe orange in this box. Orange in this box is in one of two places. Now, if orange is here, then because in this box orange is in those three cells, you can see we'd have oranges in 
that configuration and that would be orange and that doesn't work that doesn't work right why can't this be orange it's very simple you can't put orange in this box anymore there's nowhere for it to go because <laughs> orange can't if that's orange it's red and you can't repeat it in red that's really cool so orange right so this this is orange i want to say now because because orange in this box is in one of those two cells and orange in this box is in those cells we've not put yeah okay the sim oh if this been a yeah the simple thing to ask is where does orange go in column three and we know it's not there we just proved that so orange goes here so hang on so hang on now if orange goes here orange is this or, orange is the same so these two cells add up to five because that's green and that's orange and green and orange add up to five so that cell which needs its own color let's make that purple that's that's the same as that one that now that is interesting as well because if we ask where that digit which is certainly not green is it goes in this box it's got to be in this domino and therefore it must go here and therefore it goes there and it's a oh wow hang on this is actually working so in yeah in this box purple can't repeat in red so it must go there and a we know is that one from what we did earlier so purple has become a so this is now not b <laughs> so this is now b i don't think this is going to matter terribly but the blue blue was b wasn't it so that's become blue which means that oh no it doesn't no it does mean that so blue has already made an appearance in red so that can't be red so that must be blue so that must be blue so this must be blue it's actually going it's actually sort of working this um okay so now if that's b and that's b yeah that's fine okay i was suddenly thinking how can i have how can i have b up here but that that is b effectively is what we're now learning so oh my phone's just gone mad that's all right um now well what's that then that has got to be orange i think just by sudoku on this row it's not purple blue and it's not green so that must be orange so so this must be orange and that's it we've done we have actually done it we've done it i've got green and orange here and we know that green and orange add up to five from the work we did earlier so that's a two three pair which means this is not a two three pair that's so a and b are a one four pair so a and b are a one four pair so every every time there's a blue cell we can fill that in with two or three sorry not two or three no one or four i got that wrong because i've been deleting twos and threes from cells and then i got mixed up so this 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 all get filled in purple is one or four purple is one or four can we we must be able to figure out that must be purple so that's not two or three but it also requires coloration how do i can i color in these two or not i've already had this one which is green yes okay green has appeared in red already so it must be orange that appears in red in box two let's call it box two so we can do this sort of thing and then we've got a two three pair but we can also green and orangeify this and look at that we've actually colored in all of this grid uh, this square which is a b is a one or a four let's put that in let's get rid of our b b monikers now because i think that we we do understand all of the coloring and what's this told us then 
So now, now do we know more than we used to about these region sum lines? This one has always been adding up to five on each one. This one, can that really be a one? If that's a one, no. Uh, no, no, it can't because that's a red digit. Oh, this is four. It's four for this reason. If this was one, it could have had a six added to it from the left hand grid, and that would have made seven. So, seven is the, if this is one, the maximum size of the region sum is seven. But this, uh, you can see that. The, how do you keep this down to seven? You could make this two, but this five needs to add a digit that's coming from here. So you can't keep this down to seven. So this cannot be a one, it's got to be a four. Uh, so that is the blue digit. The blue digit is a four, which means that the other, the purple digit is a one. Now I can see one thing that's doing immediately because surely that's <laughs> surely there's nothing surely about this puzzle but this the region sum for this for box one here needs to add up to 11 that's what we know the total is and we've got seven there at the moment so that seems to have to acquire a four from that cell i think that has to be a four now, can we do more things like that? This adds up to five in this box. And, but that, oh no, hang on, we don't know, do we? Because it's not 11, I'm going up towards. Ah, this one's a different line. Oh no, hang on, let's think about this. So this, have we done, have we maxed out everything we can learn from this? that ditch oh we know that's already five okay so all i get from that is that that's a four really really you rotten thing i mean that seems completely and utterly perverse to me i suppose i know okay i know that digit now has got to be a little bit bigger than it used to be or do I even know that actually what are we actually thinking about here we know that this the minimum sum of this this region is five plus two plus a one in the corner that would be eight so this this cell needs to be at least four can't be four so that's a five or a six which which might matter so five or six is the total we're heading towards so this line in the right hand box is heading up towards nine or ten as its total now if it was if it was nine this cell would have to be a four and if it was 10 this cell would have to be a 5 so this is a 4 or a 5 oh there's no way I can force these to be the same digit is there no it doesn't if that's 5 that's 9 so this needs to be 4 that works okay and if this is 6 10 this needs to be 5 and it works no it does, doesn't I, I was wondering whether I could force those to be the same it doesn't work okay so down here we know we're heading up to 9 or 10 so so okay if we're heading up towards 9 this digit needs to be I want to say 1 or 2 adding on to the 2 or 3 if we're heading up towards 10 this could be 3 so this is 1 2 or 3 
This is so difficult, isn't it? It's absolutely, imagine trying to set this. That's it's quite often the thought I have when I do puzzles by Fistamabel and Jay, I just think, what on earth possessed you? Um, the weird thing about this as well is that the right hand grid, unless I'm very much mistaken, is practically done. I mean, it is practically done. It's just, all I've got to figure out is the actual total for this line. I think that's the only way that this disambiguates now. I was pausing there to just, is that actually true? I th feel like it's true. So this grid there's some magic in this grid that we've not understood at all, is where I'm getting to with that. Um, okay, that's all very well. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Okay, all right, I can see, I can, I can actually see how this works then. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful and quite ridiculous. So, I mean, basically, we've got to think harder about the fours and the fives. That's how I got to this deduction. But where is five in this box? It can't repeat in red, so it's not there. So it's here or here, I think. In this box let's get off letters so there's a five in one of these two squares but now here's the killer question where's five in yellow it's not there it's not there it's not there and it's not here and i've just proved it can't be there because there's a five in one of those so that's five i think and therefore this has to be four And there is, right, there must be a five on this Renban. Is this, oh, this might tell me what the nature of this thing is, but there must be a five on this Renban. It's a five cell Renban. So that's got, there's got to be a five in one of those two squares. And in this row, there's got to be a five in one of those two squares. And five can't repeat in yellow. Uh, I don't think it, can repeat in yellow actually so that's not a clever thought but this becoming a four what's that doing so that's the digit that we add on to this so we add on so this is nine now is the total for this line and if that's true i need to add five onto this digit wow I mean, that feels completely and utterly magical. <laughs> so that would suggest, as we're heading up towards nine on this line, oh, that takes three, oh, we take three out of the corner. That's not something we like to do. Um, and this square, I think it's this square. That has to be a five, I think, because I know I know I need to get 9 on the line, so that makes this a 5. Now, now what? <laughs> so now, um, don't know what to do now again this, this this seems to be a common thread doesn't it this so this line adds up to nine i've got to put i've definitely got to put two and three on this line so three is in one of those squares on this renban which means that can't be a three I wasn't really planning for it to be. So that square is one, two, or six. That's a yellow one, two, or six. But how do we actually... I 
don't know. I don't know. Four? Yeah, okay, I see. All right, which, which red digit in the left-hand grid can be a four? The answer appears to be one of them, that one. Which means that is not a four. That's not a four, I'm finally seeing. So four, four, oh, here we go. Four is on the white Kropke dot. So that digit is three or five. No, it's five by Sudoku because there's a five on it. I've just seen by Sudoku. So that's a five. Five is up in the corner. Ah, so it does all fit together slowly, but surely this is starting to tell us its secrets, isn't it? Where does where does four go in this box? It has to go here. Which means four goes here and suddenly suddenly we've done all the fours in the whole puzzle and we might have done all of the fives in the whole puzzle. But we haven't done all of the sixes. Which is quite strange. Um, right, hang on, hang on. So what do we know now about the right hand grid? Sorry, no, when I said right-hand grid, I was looking at the left-hand grid and thinking this grid, which is the left-hand grid. What do we know? We've placed all the fours and fives. We've got two pencil-marked sixes. Can we extract any more knowledge about the left-hand grid from the right-hand grid? That's, that's perhaps a sensible question. This cell and this cell add up to nine. It's this one, isn't it? But I don't think the twos and threes. Yeah, see, the other way of looking at this is that whatever this digit is will actually completely disambiguate the right hand grid. So that how do we learn that digit's nature? We get this Renban line figured out. That's how we do that. But how do we do that? I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. Um, we probably are going to have to do some more colouring, which is slightly terrifying. I mean, I can... That digit, for example, that goes there. <laughs> Let's, let's take that as an easy win. Those two digits are the same by Sudoku. Because that digit is not a 4 or a 5. The yellow digits can't be the same. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's weird stuff going on. There's weird stuff like that digit is the same as that digit. That's quite a strange thing to notice. How do I notice that? Let's, in fact, I can use, I'll use grey. Um, why are these the same? Well, I think this is right. This digit sees three flavours of red. We know red digits are different. And it obviously sees four and five. Everything sees four and five. So this must be the other flavour of red that has not, that's not those cells, which is that one. So those two are the same. Now, the only problem with that is that I don't think... I don't know, but I'm not sure it's going to do very much. Four, five, so this, this, this row has four, five, grey and green. This row has four, five, grey and green. And Oh, okay, and you can't repeat yellow. All right, you can't... Those two can't be the same. So whatever this digit is, we'll make that blue, that's got to go there in row two because it can't repeat in yellow. Um, so this digit, which we will make, uh, I don't know what, we'll make this orange. No, I don't want to make this orange. I want this to make this something more dramatic, I think. Purple. Um, that digit is that digit. So there is a little bit of magic we're able to perform on these rows. Now, 
What does that mean? So this is purple. Is this purple? <laughs> I'm looking at this column. I want that to be purple, but I'm not I'm not sure because I'm getting so confused about the colouring. This is a red digit. Now red were the digits that all had to be different. So that this purple digit cannot go here. That's sh surely true. Now blue, I did work out those were the same. So okay, so it's not that digit. We know it's not four and five and it can't be that one. So okay, that is good logic. That is purple. And now that is purple by Sudoku. So it's purple has become a one, two or a three. That is useful because that can't be a six therefore, because that is purple, believe it or not. So six in this column seems to have to go at the very top. So these squares are all ones, twos and threes. We're going to go full ham on the pencil marking. That can't be a four, it sees a four. This, oh, do we know? I don't know that we do know actually. Um, okay, can we do any more coloring? <laughs> I'm sure we can somehow, but I, I can't immediately see how to do it. Blue. Where's blue's red digit? That's quite a good question. Not there, not there. And this one sees those two. This one sees those two. And blue can't be the same as that one, so that must be blue which, uh, hang on, what's, what's yellow? Yellow is, yellow is another set of digits, isn't it? That's also got to be different. So given we know that's blue and that's yellow, we can't repeat that as blue. So that has to be blue by Sudoku. Now does, blue can't be four. So blue is that digit. Blue can't be five, so blue is six. Whoa, 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 that's beautiful. Blue is six by the power of shading. That's all the sixes I've suddenly just got into the grid, so that's not allowed to be six anymore. So this, this is one, two. Everything else is ones, twos, and threes. I'm just going to put it all in, in the interests of, in the interests of that. Now, what does that mean? I haven't got a clue, but what I think we've got to do somehow, some way, is to extend this coloring for, for the digits that I've sort of started to color, but not finished coloring. So like the purples and the grays, can we somehow extend this? This square, Ah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something far more satisfying than that. There's a six on this Remban line. So there's no one on it. It's only five cells long. Oh, that's beautiful. So the cell in the corner is a two. So this is not a one or a two. This has become a three. Okay, come on. Come on. Twos. This is going to finish this grid, isn't it? Because we know that this is now worth seven and it needs to be worth nine. So orange in this grid is worth two and green is worth three. That grid gets finished. Um, now all we've, got to, all we've got to do is to figure out what on earth is going on over in this grid now. Um, so the red, no, hang on, that's not a, just be careful sign. That's a purple digit, which is that digit. So that digit, this seems to have to be a 1-3 pair, and that digit, which is a green digit, has to be a 2. So this is a 1, and this is a 3. And that is a purple digit, so that seems to have to bounce back down here. So that becomes a 1-2-3. Ah, don't, 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 don't be wrong. <laughs> one 
two, one, one. I've, oh, oh, there were threes in the corner in that grid. I'm so sorry. You'll all be cross with me about that. But I am not cross with me because I seem to have managed to do this puzzle. Is this possibly correct? I have not got a clue. Let's click tick. The solution is correct. Is that true? I don't know how it knows that. Well, that's more magic from Sven. Um, but it seems to think that that is the correct solution. What a puzzle that is. That is absolutely mind-bending. Um, completely and utterly bamboozling for most of the solve. Um, and then finally some colouring got us out of trouble. It's so... It's just remarkable to, th to think you could do this with an identical grid. It's, it's literally identical. The only thing that changes is the rule that applies to the to the line. I'm just lost in admiration, Jay. Again, this is just, it's, it's quite brilliant. It's, it, it, it is an example of a quite brilliant mind at work. Um, yes, Jay Dyer, take another bow because you have again done something quite stunning the way that the lines you could keep iterating towards solutions i love the fact that i also love the fact that you could sort of start it even though it was brutally difficult it was fairly obvious that this left hand line had to be one one to twelve but then you you suddenly realize that means that you've got sixes on the line on all of the you know on this line and then you realize that because the orientation of the boxes is different you can actually place all the digits on this side and that sort of bounces back over to this side again it keeps going backwards and forwards quite blown away absolutely blown away <laughs> let me know in the comments how you got on i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and let's give jay some love because she deserves it <laughs> we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic